One out of 10 people infected with the coronavirus are healthcare workers. That is according to the World Health Organization. They are responding tirelessly to protect and care for you. We can only imagine their increased levels of stress during these times. Yet, they are making great sacrifices for the benefit of the broader community. Dr. Hans Kluge, WHO's Regional Director for Europe, says that as of yesterday, more than 6,000 healthcare workers have been infected by the coronavirus. The WHO European region has reported nearly 12,000 deaths associated with COVID-19. About 22,000 have died worldwide. Dr. Kluge says Italy has the highest number of cases in Europe, but they have started to see a slightly lower rate of increase. Monsignor Robert Vitillo, Secretary General of the International Catholic Migration Commission, joins us now from Geneva. Thank you so much for joining us. You're most welcome. It's good to be on the show. Well, I know that you have many years of global health experience, and then you've also previously served as the head of the Caritas delegation to the United Nations. Can you talk about how the coronavirus is maybe different from other health crises that we've seen, and how do you think we can overcome it? Well, first of all, it's a new virus, we, uh, so we have a lot to learn about this. And also, a lot of times we compare it to the Ebola outbreak uh, in West Africa a couple of years ago. Uh, this virus is much more contagious, uh, but it's less lethal. And so it's hard to, uh, uh, to really know exactly how this is going to, to develop. The scientists are studying a great deal on it. And of course, as you know, many governments throughout the world are uh, making restrictions on uh, social contact uh, so that we could try to keep people as safe and healthy as possible. At the same time, the World Health Organization is, uh, is uh, really coordinating a global response to this new pandemic. Amon Senior, you know, according to the Jesuit Refugee Service, I know that 42,000 people are trapped in Greek refugee camps. How is the coronavirus affecting migrants' lives? Well, this is a very serious problem. Uh, we're very, very worried about the overall impact, as we are for the rest of the world. But refugees and migrants uh, often are more vulnerable. They many times have other health conditions that make them more vulnerable to this infection or make them vulnerable to uh, developing more serious uh, consequences of the infection. Also, they don't have easy access to testing for the virus or to treatment. Uh, and, you know, we're telling everyone else in the world to use uh, voluntary uh, quarantine and social distancing. But that's very hard to do in refugee camps or when you're in very close quarters in, in the urban refugees and migrants. Uh, so we're really very worried about what's going to happen to them. Just yesterday, uh, our organization operates health clinics along the border of Pakistan and Afghanistan. Uh, and we just found out that one of our clinics needed to be closed down because there's an outbreak in that particular uh, refugee camp. Uh, in many of our other programs, we're having to close down our direct services and go on to remote uh, contact with the refugees. But that means we can't give them emergency supplies and we can't see them and do direct counseling with them. So it's very, very troubling situation. Yeah, it is very difficult indeed. And another big question, too, is how do we balance our care and concern for those who have the virus around the world with prudence and precautions and then for those in the ministry and those who provide medical care for them? This is a, this is a very serious problem, too. Uh, certainly, the, uh, the medical people are on the first lines, and many others, police and, and even reporters in many ways. Uh, but uh, uh, we also need to be sure that we can call attention uh, to their needs and also direct care and uh, keep order in society. So uh, it's, a, it's a very, very big dilemma that we're facing right now. Um, and uh, we all still don't know, uh, you know, how effective the social distancing is. Uh, we know that in some cases, like in China, with a very well-enforced social distancing, uh, it seemed to help people get through the, uh, the most serious outbreak. Uh, but there are other places where we're not sure yet how effective it's going to be. Monsignor, before we go quickly, I want to ask you this question. I know that you've been working on a series with EWTN Germany. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yes, it's a series called Virus Watch. 
Uh, certainly, uh, many of the UN operations are closed down or have gone on remote. Uh, but certainly, WHO, the World Health Organization, is in full swing and over full swing uh, because of the work that they have to do. Um, I follow WHO a great deal. And so, uh, your German affiliate asked me if I would do a weekly update uh, called Virus Watch, which I am very pleased to do with them. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for doing that as well. Monsignor Robert Vitello, Secretary General of the International Catholic Migration Commission. Thanks for your insight. Thank you, Tracy.